And so I ran away when I was 14, 15 years old. And I came in Amsterdam at the central station. And I was picked up by a man who gave me uh, food and a house to stay. And I went with him because I didn't have another place to go. I was so naive, I believed I could find a job, I could find work, people to help me. They pick up uh, boys who are coming from abroad to the big cities. Uh, they pick them up at the stations. Uh, there are guys who are very clever, who see he's coming, he has nothing to do. They, they, uh, they, ask, they speak to him and they say, do you, you're, uh, you're looking for a place to sleep. You can come with me, you can sleep. And then they gave them uh, alcohol, they gave them drugs. The day after I woke up, I found myself without clothes. And uh, he made some pictures of me. And uh, uh, I said, what are you going to do with the pictures? Yeah, I will send them to your parents if you don't want to work for us. And I said, what kind of work? He told me about uh, these brothels uh, where young boys work. And I said, I don't want to do it. And then uh, they forced me into this business. They cannot go back home. It, it, it's, it's impossible. Because they have to stay uh, at that place by these guys. I couldn't leave. Uh, and the simple reason, they blackmailed me with these photos, with this kinder porn, this, this child pornography that I was used for. I was naive. I was scared. It can go on because it's very good organized. Uh, and there's always people who are running away from home and going to the big, big city. It's, it's, it's all around going on. In these brothels there worked young boys from 14 until 18. I worked with seven, eight boys uh, my age for 15 years. They were also involved in a network, that's for sure. An international network of pedophiles smuggling boys in from Poland, Germany, Czech Republic. Uh, Austria, UK, to work in these brothels in, in the Netherlands, and especially Amsterdam. And he was for four years uh, used as a young prostitute. And still he is suffering a lot about what happened to him then. And that's why he came to me to see if I could help him. I was too naive and too shy and afraid that something would happen if I went uh, away or ran away from this brothel. When I worked in the brothels, most of them were pedophiles who were looking for have sex with young boys. And he was sent to customers or the customers came to the brothel. He was sent to parties where children were really abused with real SM techniques, young kids. When I used to work in these brothels, it was very obvious to other people that I was a minor, younger than 18 years old. I looked 14, 15 years old. I really suffered and uh, sometimes had a hard time to survive uh, because you work and sleep on the same bed. Uh, they give them more drugs, uh, more alcohol, they make movies of them and then it's the problem for the guys when they want to uh, run away uh, to, be, to go back home. Uh, they cannot be back home before they can be blackmailed with their families. Yeah, I was actually three times filmed in a movie. Uh, two are made in uh, Amsterdam and one is made in uh, the Eemhof in Zeewolde. And the movie was made also with 14, 15, 16 year old boys. The, they drogate them and, and after that they blackmail them and that is a, a, a psychology uh, slave. Uh, I also had uh, seen and meet people who made snuff movies. Snuff movie is a movie where uh, several boys or one boy uh, get sexually abused and murdered at the end of the movie. Uh, they asked me to play in one of these movies for a lot of money and I refused because I knew from other boys that it uh, can be very bad for you because you don't survive it. The customers of those used barrels are not the normal uh, people you, you think about uh, walking in the night and uh, entering those brothels, but among them were high-level politicians, um, members of the prosecution office and high uh, politicians. So people with high status in, in Dutch society. <laughs> Thank you. 
I was in the festival bar working there uh, in my youth when I was 14, 15 years old. And uh, I met uh, people there who are, who are pedophiles. I had uh, contact with uh, Professor Van Roon when I was uh, 15 years old. He was a professor at the University of Amsterdam. And he was actually the center of this whole Rolodex investigation because <clears throat> he had all the numbers of high level politicians, uh, uh, uh, lawyers, juridical officials and so on. And he was actually the go-between, the mediator between the brothel and the high level customers. When I met uh, Professor Varon at the Festival Bar in Amsterdam, and um, he introduced me to a man who was sitting in a car with a driver. In the car, I also introduced myself. He introduced himself as Joris. When I first met Demink, he asked me for my age and I said to him, I was 15 years old. Joris Demink asked me to have anal sex and he really wanted to force me to do that. He was sent by Professor Van Roon to a car with a chauffeur and a man in it named Joris. That this man, and uh, of which later said I recognize him as being Mr. Deming. Uh, well, the uh, private driver was driving. Uh, he wanted to have oral sex. Deming never came out of the car. He uh, always stayed in the car because he don't want to be seen in those places. He was a very high. Uh, level person and that was the reason he didn't want to go into these bars where all these young uh, uh, boys worked and where all these pedophiles uh, uh, came together. The second time I was with Deming it was also in his car and then he wanted to drive to The Hague to this house to have anal sex with me. I was a key witness in a very quick, a very big investigation, and that's the first time I realized that that was Joris Demming. In Amsterdam, there was an investigation in to the brothels where it was victim of, and it stopped at the moment that they reached at the suspect, Mr. Demming. I was contacted by two detectives of the Dutch government. Uh, who were busy with an investigation for uh, pedophiles in Holland. They heard about me and they found out that I knew a lot about the child prostitution and child pornography here in Amsterdam and around Amsterdam. I was with Van Roon in Poland where he had contacts. I refused a few times because I don't want to get any trouble or worse, a bullet in my head. When I was in The Hague bicycling to my uh, soccer team, people shot three times at me. That they never did something with his story, which he told open and honestly to the police, he was again traumatized, the second time traumatized and feeling powerless. Professor Varone was uh, a kind of broker. Uh, he had a Rolodex with several names in it. And, in the, and also in these names, there were high level people from the Netherlands. Also a close friend of him was Joris Demming. Varone supplied young boys to Demming and other people in the network of the Rolodex investigation. This story for me is a real credible story because it was confirmed by one of the policemen who was then functioning as a policeman in the team that did the Rolodex investigation. And this <coughs> policeman also told me, still anonymous because he's very scared, that he found out that two suspects of uh, uh, the, the customers who came to those brothels was one high-level uh, prosecutor and another one was at that time a high-level uh, uh, official of the Ministry of Justice 
who is now Secretary General of the Ministry of Justice, Mr. Deming. So this policeman could confirm me that they were suspects in that investigation. During my investigation, I met uh, uh, he told me uh, his, uh, his story and, uh, and, and I checked out uh, uh, his statement uh, to me and I can say to you that it's, it's completely, uh, it's 100 percent the right statement because I spoke to a lot of other people who uh, prove that his, his uh, story is the right story he told me. We have now one person who is identified by four or five people as abusing kids, that's Mr. Deming. And when I see myself filing a um, criminal charge against this high um, uh, uh, official in the Ministry of Justice, actually the highest one, Mr. Deming, I see that there is a complete denial of all the evidence I have by the prosecutors who I asked to prosecute this case. İstanbul e, surlarında, İstanbul'da tamam. işte, e, araştırdık arkadaşlarla sokak var, çocukları. Sokak sokak çocukları. çocukları. Onları araştırdık, oradan bulduk. Bulduğumuz da oldu yani, birkaç kişiler bulduk. Hı hı. Bir kişi daha şey seçtik. Çocuk korkuyor muydu ve ne Tabii biliyordu size? Tabii korkuyordu ya, korkmaz mıydı? Korkar. Ama biz kimseye bir şey söylemiyorduk Söyle. yani. The Turkish police caught him around 94. It was on a pedophile uh, party going on in Bodrum. And uh, they caught him because one of the minors he abused uh, ran away crying. I did an investigation in Turkey. I spoke to three, to three guys. Uh, two of them, uh, I interviewed them on video and on tape. And, and they told me they, uh, they were being raped by, by the Secretary General. Bana ilk önce işte yanan okşamalar, elimin üstüne okşamalar. All the, all the evidence I put it over to the prosecutor in The Hague, but I didn't do anything about it. I showed him the photos. He took one photo out of the book, he screwed them. Uh, that was the picture of the Secretary General of the Ministry of Justice in Holland. When he saw the picture, he was very angry. And he told me that was the person who raped him. My Turkish cases in which I represent two kids, in which we have an amazing quantity of, um, of evidence. We have a policeman who said that he brought the kids to this same person, Mr. Deming, at that time also high official Ministry of Justice. These boys can never be the same. It's terrible, terrible to see that, how they are, have to, to, to, to live their lives, uh, on, go on and go on. I think that my investigation is shut down because it's of the high level person uh, is so powerful they can, that he, he, he can break down my investigation. Those men, those high-level customers, they didn't get the boys only from foreign um, countries. They got the boys also from criminal organizations. So what we see also is that criminal organizations in the Netherlands get their influence on high-level officials in the Ministry of Justice who has the power to decide about everything. So this means that you get a complete deterioration of your system of democracy, rule of law. He control uh, about everything. He controlled the police and he controlled the just, uh, just the system. He control uh, everything. He's a pedophile and he used his power uh, to continue uh, all his pedophile actions. In the Netherlands, they want to go on believe in their own fairy tale. And they don't want to believe that they are ruled by people who do those horrible things to kids and that they are so corrupt.
They want to believe in the fairy tale of the Netherlands. So I think the Dutch don't want to admit that this is happening in their own country. But not accepting it means they let it go on. That's the problem and that's where we stand for that we say no, we have to bring this out. We don't want that this goes on. This is not the country we want to live in. Citizens in Holland uh, says it, it, it, it, it doesn't happen in Holland. It happens uh, maybe in, uh, in, in other countries far away, but it doesn't happen in, in Holland. They don't believe it, therefore they can continue, uh, is my opinion. When he sees that the people who were abusing him when he was a young kid without any power will be brought to court, then he can find his own power back as now an adult. Psychologically for him it's very important that his truth is accepted and that the guilty persons are brought to, to court. Deming uh, will, when he retires, will probably leave the Netherlands and what you know, it is it will really be a shame for the Netherlands that such a man is leaving his position with a ribbon of the Queen and maybe some extra money and can leave to a country where he can go on uh, using, abusing minors and uh, not being brought to court. And what we want is that even before he leaves, justice will be done. The facts I have would be enough for a conviction, I say, as a criminal lawyer. We have to do uh, good investigations with good guys and good prosecutors and all the dirty uh, people uh, out, of the, out of the investigation. If I not have been a victim of child prostitution and child pornography, I would have had a normal life. I should have had a normal sexual life. I would have had a girlfriend, go to college. Grow up as a normal person. That they will put uh, pedophiles, child abusers, and people who are busy with making kinder porn, child pornography, that they will be convicted and that they will seriously look to victims of uh, these brutal people because you are uh, damaged for life. When I first became a father, I realized how sick people were at the time I was working in the brothels. How can you do that to a child? Because you really molest them for life. You break them for life. I will hope that people will stand up and uh, make a fist and uh, and say this is that we don't accept it anymore that it's that's it's enough